This is West Africa, and locals have to walk dozens of miles to quench their thirst in the middle of the desert, all for the sake of a single source of water, which will probably be dirty. People suffer from the lack of drinking water so much, they're ready to fight for it. While humans can still make deals amidst fighting for resources, animals just take what they want, no matter what needs to be done or what the price will be. The key is to achieve the goal. What do you think of when someone mentions the bird's nest? Most likely a round something twisted from branches, the easiest option. But there is one material the birds are willing to do a lot for. Tiny Hawaiian alipayos travel long distances just to get it. I'm talking about wool. In fact, many birds use wool to build their nests. Where do they get wool? Well, from someone who has it. Any fairly woolly animal you can get close to will do. Sometimes birds collect wool that has already fallen off and left in the grass or trees. But if the search takes too long, they fly straight to the source. And they just pull out the wool bits. Yes, without permission. Yes, from any animal with enough wool. Your dog is also at risk. You have to admit, birds are not the kind of creatures you would consider, well, threatening. But they still do it. Hold on a second. Why did they pick wool? There are a huge variety of materials in the world that may seem weird for building a nest. Why not go a step further and start, I don't know, picking the asphalt? Well, if asphalt had the same properties as wool, I think the birds would use it too. Animal wool fiber is good for nests because it's strong and does not absorb water. The bird can consider itself really lucky if it manages to get sheep's wool. Not only does it not get wet, it also does not mold and has a balancing effect on humidity and temperature. Think it's still not cool enough to justify pulling it out from its wares? Well, among other things, it works as a filter that keeps dirt out. The nest that features wool starts to look like the most comfortable apartment in the world. A perfect climate control, a built-in air purifier, and a great view, of course, almost like a penthouse. No wonder some birds are ready to fly who knows where to get some wool. After all, all parents want the best for their kids, even if they're just eggs for a while. Look, maybe this is how bald cats appeared. Some birds just got too carried away. What about the animals who get their wool plucked? Of course, no one asks them, but you can't just ignore the fact that your wool is being stolen. Try quietly pulling on one of your friends by the hair. They'll probably not ignore it. Maybe if the sheep had long tails like horses or cows, they could wave them to drive the birds away. But they don't need that. The birds know exactly what they're doing. They carefully pluck out the loose wool, which would fall off anyway after a while, a totally painless procedure. To be honest, the sheep in some photos even look happy. Maybe for them, it's something like a massage combined with hairstyling. While some birds act carefully, taking away only excess wool, others, well, others are just crows who do not know any compassion. Mentions of confrontation between birds of prey and sheep can be found even in Aesop's fables. And they, by the way, date about 6 centuries BC. Even back then, the crows realized that lambs are tasty and nutritious. And besides, they're not so difficult to catch. Sometimes they eat only the eyes and tongues of their victims. Sometimes they drag away the entire lamb. And sometimes they feed on carrion. And you know what? All this does not prevent corvids from plucking out sheep's wool in order to make their nests, and doing it as carefully as the rest of the birds. We can say that crows make use of everything the sheep can give them. Well, maybe except for fertilizer. Poor, poor sheep. They probably don't suspect anything. Just imagine, a minute ago the bird was giving you a free haircut and then suddenly... Exterminate him! Exterminate him! This is what birds are about. If they can get food, they will get it. And if they find a suitable material for the nest, they will not ponder where it comes from. Is it hanging on the fence? Excellent. Found on dead sheep? Not a problem. See it on a dog just basking in the sun? Sorry, buddy. I really need this more than you do. Once people even saw a crow pulling the hair of a mannequin standing in the street. It's unlikely the bird just hated its haircut. However, synthetic hair is not the most suitable material for building nests. Unless, of course, the bird is going to risk its health and the health of chicks every day. Yes, humans are also fluffy enough, but our natural hair is too long, thin, and strong. Experts say this combination can be deadly. Don't believe me? If you take a long enough hair and wrap it around your finger, this will disrupt your blood circulation. 
but our fingers are much thicker and stronger than the body parts of many small birds. For them, getting tangled in human hair means damaging a leg or wing and maybe even losing them. Not to mention the hair can wrap around the neck and simply strangle the animal. And we're talking about adults. Chicks are 10 times more vulnerable. And you know what? The fact that human hair is so different from wool seems weird to me. I mean, we're all sort of animals, right? But only our hair has become so strong. It's like a fishing line for the bird. Turns out scientists have long been interested in this phenomenon. Some researchers believe that in terms of weight-to-strength ratio, hair can be compared to Kevlar, the material used to make bulletproof vests. Nature created composite materials long before humans even learned to think about such things. I wouldn't be surprised if one day we'll have hairy body armor. But let me share a few numbers with you so that you get the idea. One strand of hair can easily support a weight of about 3.5 ounces, and all the hairs on the head of a person, which on average number about 150,000, are so strong they can support 12 tons. This is roughly two African elephants. I hope no one would think of doing this experiment in real life, because the elephants, well, most likely they'll be against it. Better focus on hair. While birds risk their lives upon contact with hair, monkeys have learned to use human hair for their own purposes. I wouldn't be surprised if it turned out that animals began to weave ropes out of them, but so far, these serve just as dental flaws. Yeah, monkeys use human hair to clean the space between their teeth. Moreover, they teach their offspring how to do this and can easily pull out hair from tourists. What other options do they have? Monkeys have not invented dentist services yet, but who knows? What if this happens soon? If anything, baboons are already raiding human homes in Cape Town. Everybody be cool, this is a robbery! It all started with the tourists feeding the animals, and they quickly realized that human equals food. Baboons began to attack restaurants, houses, or even ordinary passers-by if they had something edible in their hands. And the problem has not been resolved yet. The baboon troops even have their own leaders, alpha males who command the offensive and decide who to attack. Bottom line, we exchanged all the food in the city for this stone. Do we have a deal? Ha! Fat chance! So you have chosen death. No, really. If animals can lie, why shouldn't they learn to negotiate? Many of them, for example, pretend to be venomous or dead, inflate to scare the enemy. But Coco the gorilla stands out from the rest. She knew how to communicate with people using sign language and was really smart. One day, Coco broke a sink and blamed it on her kitten. Well, yeah, we're convinced. Usually, it's way simpler than that. Maybe because most animals don't have their own kittens. But on the other hand, the female marsh harrier learned to court the males in order to gain access to their food. After reaching the food supply, the bird feeds it to its chicks, fathered by another male. I can imagine how upset the deceived bird was. What would one do in a situation like that? If only there was some kind of protection. Some scary thing, like snakeskin. Some birds decorate their nest with shed snakeskin so that its scent would scare off flying squirrels that eat the eggs. The absence of squirrels means the gray rat snake, which preys on these squirrels, will not crawl into the nest. Well, that's quite many visitors. Excuse me, am I bothering you guys? I knew I shouldn't have bought this snakeskin on sale. See you later.